let's assess, shall we? Bag over my head for optimal disorientation. Wrists tied tight enough to cut off circulation. And no idea if I'm going to live or die. It's definitely my kind of party. Eventually, the bag is lifted from Wednesday's head, but her wrists are still tied. Though hooded figures surround her, the girl isn't afraid, and she simply tells Bianca to take off her mask. It turns out that the nightshades are merely high schoolers from Nevermore, who are more concerned about drinking and throwing parties. Xavier, who's also a member, reveals that the nightshades lost its charger 30 years ago after a normie kid died, while Bianca states they booted Rowan out last semester. When Xavier suggests they invite her to become a member, Bianca objects, while Wednesday isn't even remotely interested in joining. Later, when Wednesday peruses the book she pilfered earlier, she wonders who the pilgrim on the other half of the ripped image is. On outreach day, Nevermore students are assigned to do volunteer jobs at Jericho, and it's then that Wednesday finds an opportunity to talk with Xavier about Rowan again, after admitting that he wasn't able to contact his former roommate since the latter was expelled. Xavier enlightens Wednesday that the man in the picture is Joseph Crackstone, Jericho's founding father. Meanwhile, Sheriff Galpin isn't too happy seeing Nevermore students, convinced that they have something to do with the recent attacks. However, Jericho's mayor, Noble Walker, tells him to stop pointing fingers at Nevermore, reminding the sheriff that Jericho depends a lot on the academy. After the mayor welcomes the Nevermore students with exaggerated enthusiasm, Wednesday proposes to switch assignments with Enid, who accepts upon knowing that her crush Ajax will be volunteering in Uriah's Keep. At Pilgrim World, Wednesday attempts to be assigned at the Meeting House, where some of Crackstone's artifacts are kept, but instead, she and the others are made to sell fudge. Later, Eugene gets harassed by the normie bullies, but fortunately, he's immediately saved by Wednesday, who once again puts them in their places. Meanwhile, Mayor Walker thanks Principal Weems for her generous donation to his re-election campaign, and the latter responds it's a mere token of their ongoing cooperation. When Thornhill approaches them, the mayor seems to think she's familiar, but she denies ever meeting him before. After Wednesday helps Eugene clean up, she enlists his help to break into the meeting house, and inside, she finds a portrait of the girl in her vision. Wednesday also spots the book that she saw the blonde girl was holding, the Book of Shadows but she discovers it's a fake. Soon after, their chaperone catches them red-handed, but she does enlighten Wednesday that the real book was indeed stolen last month. At Uriah's Keep, unbeknownst to both Enid and Ajax, a homeless-looking man steals a camera from right under their nose. Nevertheless, the two Nevermore students share a sweet moment, with Enid assuring her Gorgon crush that she doesn't mind if he accidentally turns her into stone. Ajax agrees to meet with her later at night, much to Enid's enthusiasm. At Weathervane, upon hearing that Wednesday is looking for Tyler, a disappointed Xavier reiterates that the normie is bad news, but she doesn't listen. Wednesday asks Tyler where the old meeting house is, to which he answers, it's in Cobham Woods. Immediately, Wednesday makes a beeline for the old meeting house and encounters the thieving man from the shop. After things scares him away, Wednesday touches random things to evoke a vision, and when she's successful, she sees an angry crowd ganging up on the familiar blonde girl. The people part to reveal Joseph Crackstone, who declares that the girl, who is revealed to be Goody Adams, is a witch who should be burned to death. Goody insists she's innocent, saying it's Crackstone who should be tried, as he not only stole their land, but also murdered innocents. Goody then injures his face with a knife, but it only enrages Joseph, who then drags her to a barn already filled with her lot outcasts. They trap the chained people inside, setting the structure ablaze, while Wednesday witnesses everything. In the barn, Goody finds her chained mother, who tells her to escape and avenge them, claiming she's their only hope. Wednesday follows Goody, who suddenly runs towards her, saying that Crackstone won't stop until he's killed all of them. Just as the man appears to tell Wednesday that there's no escape, she wakes from her vision. She rapidly tells Thing what she saw, believing that Goody is her ancestor from 400 years ago. When she then hears a noise nearby, she investigates, only to be shocked upon seeing the monster which had killed Rowan. Wednesday escapes quickly and comes across the monster's tracks, which curiously turns to prints belonging to a human. Unexpectedly, Xavier appears, admitting he heard her conversation with Tyler, 
and Wednesday tells him what she just discovered. The monster is actually human. But when she shows him the tracks, the rain has already washed it all away. Xavier is skeptical, but he admits he's starting to believe what she's saying about Rowan. He knows that Wednesday is psychic, as he has a dad who's famous for being one. He tells her that visions can't be trusted, for they only show one part of the picture and are triggered by emotions. But still, Wednesday believes that something bad is about to happen. Later, during the statue dedication in town, Wednesday and Thing blow up Crackstone's bronze figure. While her surroundings erupt in chaos, Wednesday continues playing her cello, providing apt background music as everyone runs away. However, her actions make Weems suspicious, and the principal is furious about the aftermath the Adams girl has caused. Wednesday is unfazed and she's more concerned about why Weems is agreeing to cover up the real events involving Crackstone. When the principal states she'd rather forget the past and focus on improving the current normie outcast relationship, Wednesday points out that nothing has changed. The normies still hate them, perhaps not as overtly. Even though Weems finds Wednesday exhausting, she's not giving up on her yet. That evening at the old meeting house, the thieving homeless man is attacked by the monster, while his camera keeps making pictures. Later, Enid is excited about her date with Ajax, but as the Gorgon accidentally turns himself into stone, she gets stood up. At the same time, Sheriff Galpin finds the camera at the scene of the crime, and finally, he has proof a monster has been slaying people in the woods. The truth is, there are monsters everywhere.